my name is Ettore Randazzo and today I'm going to make a different kind of video from the ones that I've done before. Before I was showing some examples of what could be done and some uh, experiments that I performed. Uh, in this video instead I will focus on uh, showing you how to run Biomaker yourself and how to uh, create your own configurations. This is going to be a very introductory uh, tutorial, uh, but if you're interested in more complex or advanced ones, please let me know. And also, I will continue doing other kinds of videos which are more uh, exposition based. With that, uh, let's jump in. So first of all, you can follow along just by checking uh, the link that we have in the description to go to our GitHub codebase, uh, the self-organized system ones, and uh, go to the Biomaker CA in directory. Now here you can look into uh, how everything is implemented and it's implemented in Python and JAX. Uh, but for the use case of today, you want to go to examples notebooks. And uh, these are all uh, examples on how to run different experiments. The last one, run configuration, is the one that we are going to use today. And uh, if you click on it, uh, this is an IPython notebook, but we want to open it with Google Colab. So we go here and we write GitHub to Colab. And once you click this, it gets converted into a collab. And uh, what you want to do here is you want to check what runtime type you have. I would recommend using uh, GPUs, but also CPUs would work. It would just take much longer. Just do whatever you can and, uh, and then click Save and make sure that you are connected, clicking in here. So after that, this now you can just click this button here to run some code and uh, we will use that to uh, run and uh, load all our systems so first of all you need to load the github repository so you just click this button and unfortunately i've noticed that there are some dependency in dependencies inside that are kind of broken that they require a lower version of flux and uh, this uh, breaks, but actually it's just, uh, it has already installed the right version. You just need to restart the runtime. And when you do that, uh, it will work. If you have any solution, please let me know on how to do this without having to restart the, run restart the runtime. But now you click this and it will work. So now that we have uh, loaded the code base, um, we also want to import MediaPy, which is going to be the way we will visualize uh, videos of our simulations. And now this is actually the core of the, uh, of the code. So actually, let me just zoom in for, so that we will see more. This is the way that you import everything in Biomaker CI. Uh, we don't care about this, really. You can just click on it. And now here, we can select the configurations that we are interested in playing. Uh, for example, we will start for showing what happens with Pestilence, which is a relatively complex configuration. And uh, we will use the width type, which is a landscape, which is the usual 16 ninth resolution, which is quite good for making videos, for example, um, YouTube videos. Uh, and we will start with an extended digit model and uh, a basic mutator. So once you click this, it will generate uh, an agent model. And as you can see, it tells you the number of parameters. In this case, it's 13,000 parameters which is quite a lot for an, a live simulation. Um, you can also see what are the, the configuration parameters, uh, but we will talk about it later. So then the only thing you have to do is just, just click on this button to perform the simulation. And what this does, it, it is going to generate a video. Uh, I think it's very important to notice that the first time you uh, will compile, the first time you run one step of the environment the JAX will compile and it will take some time. But after the first time, then it will execute it very, very quickly on the GPU. Um, so as you can see now, it's running much, much faster. And once this is uh, performed, you will have a simulation. Now notice that we are having, uh, uh, we are saying that we want to simulate 500 frames. It's not the number of steps uh, in this case, because I wanted to have a fixed length of videos. Uh, so I wanted to, to say it in the number of frames. And I can also say how quickly this is going to be. So whenever we will make some simulations, in this case, I will pad it by saying what is the number of steps and uh, the speed. But I usually don't use this when I generate videos for, uh, for the actual YouTube videos. So now, once it's been generated, uh, you can see that it tells you the number of steps and the speed of execution, and it, this will increase over time. And uh, as you can see, 
This is a simulation in pestilence where agents are generally having a hard time surviving and they have a very small uh, lifetime. Uh, notice that this is a video that you can download. So you can click here and click download and you can have it for yourself. Uh, but now let's look at what we were doing here. So I created a, 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 some code that shows you what is the current configuration. And pestilence uh, is, uh, let's say, interesting because it's relatively simple, but it has something that makes it harder than others. The first one is the specialized cost. So whenever a cell has to specialize into, a, for example, root or leaf or a flower, it costs quite some nutrients. As you can see, it's pairs of nutrients because it requires uh, air nutrients and earth nutrients. I think air, earth nutrients should be the first and the second one is air nutrients. And uh, also the lifetime of agents is only 300. So this is quite little, is this the shortest amount that I have in all my simulations so far. Um, now let's try something different. Let's go with persistence, which is generally the easiest configuration that we have. And uh, this time let's go with a wide landscape. Um, so it will be a wide environment. So it would be quite larger. And uh, we can keep the uh, agent model as extended, but let's just do randomly adaptive right now, uh, just to show something different. So now we run this and uh, we can see how uh, the config changes. The specialized cost is much lower and maximum lifetime is 10,000, which is quite a lot. Everything else is actually the same. So now we can run it and uh, note that we are again recompiling. Uh, this is because we changed the configuration, we changed the environment, so we need to recompile a new step function. Uh, the step function, by the way, is this one essentially, which uh, generates a new environment and new agent programs at every single step. But after it's compiled, it, it will be fast again. Note that this is a bit slower than the other one because this is a larger environment. All right, so this is being completed. And uh, now we can see how this environment uh, is different. Besides being wider, which is just a choice that we, we made, uh, plants have a much easier time. Uh, because we have a, a randomly adaptive uh, mutation strategy, you will see that plants have very different behaviors from one, uh, from one another. Uh, because there's a lot of mutation going on and plants are trying to figure out what works best. Also note that because they have a much longer maximum lifetime, they can essentially uh, stay for as long as needed. Essentially, they usually collapse before they die out for old age. So now, let me show you something. So even just the same exact configuration of persistence with, uh, with a wide type of um, environment, if you change the agent model to minimal and basic, basic, now everything will change. So. Now the number of parameters is much, much shorter, like it's 300. This is quite aligned with the, with many uh, artificial life experiments. And uh, the config is just the same. It, nothing has changed here. Uh, and when you run the simulation, now something will change. So now we can look at uh, the exact same configuration, but with a different agent logic and mutation strategy. And uh, they start with exactly the same DNA, but mutation now is very different. It's actually much more tame. Like there's not much going on in the mutation, let's say. So as you can see, plants grow a lot and uh, then die out because they're not collapsing, not because they got old, because as, you, as I remind you, they can live for 10,000 steps. Well, let's say 5,000 5, or some more. Um, and this is coming from exactly the same configuration. Now, what happens if we change some specific parts of the configuration? So now here, uh, what we can do is we can change some, some parameters. I mean, we can create our own configurations. Uh, it's very important to copy the config before you do anything with it. And the reason is because you want to have a different object that will trigger a recomputation in the step function. If you don't do that, then you will uh, run again with the older config and nothing will change. So we've seen that uh, this uh, configuration has uh, a maximum lifetime of 10,000, which is quite a lot, and is the main difference from pestilence. Although, of course, pestilence has also got a higher specialized cost. So for example, if we just now change the maximum lifetime to 500, now this is going to be a very big change for, for them. Uh, exact same configuration, nothing uh, is changing, and let's see what happens.
All right. So now, in this case, plants are unable to grow too much because after maximum 5,000 steps, they die. But actually, they die much sooner because after 250 steps, they start getting older and older, which makes them dissipate more and more nutrients. So usually after 300, 350 steps, it's already quite too much for them and they just die. And as you can see, uh, they just grow very, very small plants that then die. But this is already interesting, but quite still as an easy environment. So let's try to make it more complex. There's much more that we can do here. Uh, I think one of the most interesting parameters here to change is, for example, the uh, spawn cost. So how, how much it costs to spawn a new plant and also the produce cost, like how much does it cost to uh, create a new, uh, a new seed from a flower. Uh, if we increase this, it's going to be quite interesting to see if the agents can survive or not. So let's try to do this. We can go here and we can change some parameters. For example, uh, instead of doing this separation per step, we can say spawn cost. So we go here and uh, we want to say, as opposed to being 0 0.75, we can make it uh, 1.5. And now that we, again, we need to do it for each of those and it has to be a, a Jackson Pi array. Uh, this is for earth nutrients and this is for air nutrients, which means that actually you could have a different cost depending on the kind of nutrient, which I actually have not explored at all yet on what it would mean. Likewise, we want to have some different reduced cost and uh, we can do this, for example, by saying that now it costs two each. So now we have a different configuration which with a small max lifetime, uh, spawn cost and the reduced cost, which is very high. So let's see. Will it work? I, I don't know. So, let's see. The plants are much, much smaller than before, and they are very much struggling, and in the end, they die. So this is quite hard, much harder than before. Uh, the plants essentially didn't have the time to adapt, for example. Maybe it could be because they had a, a basic mutation strategy, but I mean, that was quite a hard initialization. And actually, there's something that you can do to make a better initialization, which gives them a higher, better chance of survival. Because if you notice here, when you create a config, then this config gets used to generate a new agent logic. So what you can do here is you say, I created a new config, and then the new agent logic will be based on this config. Now, what would change here? Well, uh, one thing that I do when I generate an agent logic is to make it easier for plants to start is I tell them, hey, maybe you want to save uh, more nutrients before doing some kind of operation. Uh, you want to pass some nutrients after you get sufficiently many nutrients yourselves, or if you want to, uh, if you're a flower, you want to keep even more nutrients. So because now the costs of reproduction and, uh, uh, and spawn are different, perhaps having a better initialization helps to start with the system. There are many different ways to evolve agents uh, to make them be better. And it's ultimately very interesting to see how agents evolve in the environment. But giving them an initial starting point might be very useful. Uh, if you make your own architecture uh, and agent logic, uh, you might want to consider to have them also dependent on the configuration. Or you could be just pure and say, no, they will have to adapt in different ways in the environment. So here is the new version. and. Uh, well, they learned to evolve, uh, well, to evolve. They learned to survive, or at least they, it seems like they're, they're managing. Uh, but of course, the, the size uh, is still very small because, of course, it takes it costs more and it, and they to reproduce and to spawn, and they uh, have only a small lifetime. But at least we do we did something new here. Uh, one final thing I want to show you is how you can change the environment as well. Although we will not show too much here, I just want to highlight how sideways, uh, which actually works very well with landscape and wouldn't work well with other configurations because this is actually, uh, let's say, uneven, um, is uh, going to be very interesting. So first of all, maybe we want to go with extended and randomly adaptive this time because these are the configurations that works best uh, for this kind of uh, environment. Uh, so once you generate sideways, now notice that sideways is exactly the same as uh, uh, the persistent uh, configuration. So they have the same laws of physics. However, the environment is different. 
and uh, this will change uh, a lot the behavior one other thing that you can do actually is you can make this much longer you can make it for 700 frames and uh, you can also say that uh, the steps per frame are much more so in this case uh, it will take much longer to simulate it but uh, i can speed it up for you all right so we can see how it goes here so as you can see the environment is different because you have uh, nutrients coming from the only top left and bottom right uh, so there's very scarce as nutrients uh, in the environment and plants are really struggling because they don't have enough nutrients uh, but they are trying to survive and while they do they generate different heaps that makes it harder and harder to survive actually so this is a very dynamic environment usually plants die out very very soon this one dies out in 10,000 steps uh, but there are times where it can survive for much longer but in general this is let's say a very hard environment and it's an open question on how to uh, make those agents survive consistently in such an environment um, so i think the, this should be a good moment to stop for today uh, but i just want to let you realize that there's a lot that can be done here that uh, we didn't explore uh, some initial things that you can think about is how different material uh, placement in the environment change completely the, uh, the experience of, of the uh, plant agents. But also uh, you could consider adding new kinds of materials uh, or agent specializations. Uh, and finally, uh, it's essential to figure out what are the right kinds of agent logic and uh, mutation strategies. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of format, please let me know. Uh, I'm very willing to do more tutorials of different expertise levels and uh, just notice that Google Collabs are free and it's a beautiful way to, for reproducing somebody else's work because you can just uh, run it and it will work with, uh, 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 with, uh, in a way which is agnostic to your specific work session. Um, and if you like what, what you're seeing or want to see more, please like and subscribe. And well, until next time.